Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Campfire Council podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening. We appreciate all of you. As you can see, we got a nice little setup here. Uh, thank you to our church for providing the space. We definitely appreciate it. Uh, definitely a little bit more cozy and comfortable, that's for sure. But uh, today we'll get into it right away. So, uh, Joyce, if you want to go ahead and take it away. Oh, sure. So we're going to be talking about uh, surrendering today. So what does it look like to surrender? What do, what do we mean by surrender? And how in our lives have we surrendered ourselves to Christ? So first of all, like, what does it look like? Um, or what does it mean? We could start with rather like, what do you guys think it means to surrender yourself? Like, let's just start like with the, with the base. Like, just give me like a definition of like surrendering. Or maybe we could even look it up just to kind of get like a little. To give up control. Okay. Like in wartime, that that's what you are you asking for a general yeah just definition a general yeah definition. to give up to give up control or power over something, which kind of relates to what surrendering to God is. I mean, you're giving up your own your own power, your own pride, um, and you're giving it over to God. Yeah, your own desires. And also, that ties into obedience, I think too, with giving up your power, desire, and recognizing what he wants for you and obeying it. <laughs> Sorry, dude. Freaking Wes, bro. <laughs> but, <laughs> dude, freaking punch right, me back. or something. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the... All right. <clears throat> All right. I'm good. Yeah. I would, yeah, obedience cool. and surrendering like you were saying, Milo. Yeah. Cool. Well, so then what does it look like to surrender to God or to Jesus? Because... I feel like that looks a lot different than, um, crap, where was I going with that thought? Um, there you go. Hall? <laughs> Hall. <laughs> like, it's different than general surrender? Yeah. Um, yeah, because in the context of Christianity, we're, we're talking about, you know, um, surrender, surrendering control over your life, whereas, um, you know, surrender could have a much more general meaning in other contexts, like... I guess, how would you split, explain it to someone that, like, can't understand the concept of, like, oh, like, what do you mean by, like, you're surrendering your life? Mm -hmm. If anyone has a good answer for that. Want to go? Sure. Okay. I was just going to say, <clears throat> I think we really uh, are tested in times of uh, difficulty when we go through a tough challenge in our life, tough season of life. And I think we should surrender every moment to God, but I think it's especially important and a little bit easier to surrender or easier in the sense that like you have more to give over to God, but still in those tough scenarios is not easy and by any means to like actually surrender. So what it means is when you're going through a tough time, you could just be like, all right, I'm going to do this myself. I'm going to power through it. I'll find a way and I don't need anyone. I don't need to pray about it. I don't need um, people around me to tell me what to do. I'm going to do it all by myself. But if I were to explain it to somebody that maybe didn't know what that meant surrendering to God, I would say, that maybe I do lose that like trust um, in God in those tough times, but I still know that like I'm still praying to God and I'm still coming before him and saying, God, I don't know what your plan for me is. I don't know what this is going to look like when I come out on the other side. But and while I may not trust your plan, I have faith that you have a plan for me. And so that's the difficult part because we live in the present we don't we don't know what's to come only god knows what's to come and i think that that's just how i would explain it to somebody that maybe doesn't know and that looks different in everyone's life of what surrendering personally looks like um if it's just more prayer or maybe doing um somebody's stomach is rumbling i think that was my throat Oh. oh, it's his bone. It's the fish, fish bone stuck in my oh, throat. Boy. Uh, off of off of what you're saying, Brandon, too, I think that goes into knowing how to surrender to God is also like your daily decisions of giving those up to God. Like maybe you're you want to decide to do one thing, but God's commands and He teaches us not to do that thing. It's learning how to hmm. instead of doing what our our human sinful desires is, our what we want to do control in our life, giving that up and deciding and knowing that we need to take a different direction that God wants us to take. 
And that's another form of surrendering because we're just surrendering our, our decisions, our choices, and we're realizing that God is in control of us and he knows what's best for us. And it's just giving it over to him. Like you said, we don't know what's going to happen in the future, but just trusting in him by giving those things over to him. That's awesome. Cause I feel like that's a good point of like giving God like fully, you know, cause it, it's like sometimes we pick and choose on what we give to God. Like, Oh, I'll give this up, but then I'm just going to keep like this going, you know? And it's like, like, what is it? I guess that's another question I have. What does it look like to fully give your life to God? Because God doesn't want pieces, right? He wants He wants your all. And so what to you guys like is like that full giving yourself to Christ? I well, think I, oh. um, I just want to say one, one thing about like defining surrender, and I think it, this relates to your question here. Like we can also think about what life is like without God and without without the Bible, without Christianity. And... So if you think about like think about think about it from the perspective of somebody that doesn't believe in Christianity, doesn't believe in Jesus, um, how do they make the decision decisions of their life? It's um, it's they're not, I guess, uh, restricted to a set of rules about morality um, like a Christian is, and so uh, they they would perceive it as being more free to do what they want. Uh, without without Jesus, without surrendering their life to to Christ, and I think that's where that concept comes in, where you think that you have freedom without God, but you realize that you are shackled by sin, you are shackled by um, uh, desires that you shouldn't have that are evil, right? And by surrendering and actually. Um, yielding to god's rules god's uh plan for your life you actually find freedom so i think that that um your your question was what does it look like to fully surrender but i just wanted to like preface it with that that we should we should think about this as um a contrast between how the world wants to live and how god wants us to live right and i and i I mean there's multiple different examples throughout the entire bible of what that looks like and I think when it comes to the aspect of surrendering, you know, I think of I think of Abram, who later became Abraham, trusting in God and surrendering his, you know, life over to God. And God says, I'm going to bless you for this. And, um, dang it. And giving his, you know, way of life over to God and just being like, yep. And even surrendering to the point where, you know, God asks him to sacrifice his son, Isaac. And he was so obedient in surrendering to God's control and God's rule. He's like, yeah, I'm just, I'm going to go do that because I love you, God, and I'm going to trust in you. And, um, you're asking me to do this. And in and through that surrendering, God can also take that and, and take it in a way where it turns out to be a blessing. So in that story, we see that Abraham takes his son Isaac up on the mountain to sacrifice his son to God. And instead, God goes, wait, 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 wait. Instead, here, because of your faith and because of you surrendering to my authority and my rule, I'm going to give you this ram. Sacrifice this ram instead. And so God can use our own faith and our own, you know, submission to him and our faith in him and trying to live our lives in according to what he has for us. And he can use what we think would be like, okay, I don't get this, but I'm going to surrender it to you. And God's going to say, no, nope, look here, I got something that's going to be an even better blessing. And that's kind of a, it's not a perfect example, I'll admit, because there's a lot of things where like, this doesn't always play out perfectly in like our lives. Like the story of Abraham and Isaac, like doesn't yeah. perfectly play out. I'm just saying like, that's just one example of, you know, submission to God's authority and God's rule over our lives. And Abraham could have been like, Nope, I'm not going to go do that. 
but God had a purpose and a plan, used then his son Isaac to then become a great nation. You know? And for all the listeners, we're not saying that <laughs> Please don't. God's telling you to sacrifice your son by any means, but that's a very... Unless he is. I, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> hey, oh. Maybe Hopefully the... not. But yeah. that's uh, that's one story in the Bible that God is yes. calling Abraham to do that in obedience. And as we can see, God tells him to stop and he, you know, he offers up the ram in that situation. And like God... God will bless us in ways, whether we see it or not, when we do obey, uh, obey him in those situations. So when God tells us to do this or follow me here or uh, stop doing this, give up that. But back to back to what you're saying too, Milo, it's like you said, it seems like by following God, by following Christ, it's going to, we're more enslaved to something because of all the, the commandments and the rules. But you're you're so much more free. Mm-hmm. Like you said to me, like the shackles are being taken off of us because God offers true freedom of... Can you explain that freedom to people that may not understand that concept? Because I feel like that could be like really foreign. But like, well, if you're... Yeah. If you have to give everything you have to this God and like, I feel like that just doesn't quite make sense to a lot of people. Yeah, so I would say it is, it is kind of confusing at first, but... As humans, it's it's in our nature to sin. And I think everyone can agree in this room and people listening that we mess up, we make mistakes, we sin. People are going to hurt us, we hurt other people. And throughout life, we're going to have desires of, you know, people want power, they want money, sex, uh, everything that the world has to offer. And I'm not saying these things are all bad, but in, in time, they can become addicting, uh, they can become our only thoughts and what we're working for in life. And we can become enslaved to these things. So whether enslaved to working like you're workaholic or you're enslaved to something that's addictive or you're enslaved to sex or something like that, that that controls your life. That's not freedom. But what God has to offer is he offered up his one only son to die on the cross to forgive us for all those things that we've done. And through him, we can give up all of that ugly sin that we have in our life to him and we can have that burden take off of us. And God offers true freedom by, yes, we are going to fall and make mistakes and we're going to sin. But as long as we repent and ask for forgiveness and follow Christ, he will forgive us and we will have eternal life with him um, in heaven. And that's what true freedom is because knowing that the struggle, it's not just us going through life on our own we have christ by our side so hopefully that explained it enough and it's just human nature to be addicted to something and addiction is kind of um it's kind of analogous to worship like whatever it is that you're what word did you use uh analogous yeah what's what's that mean i don't even know if that's the right word i think it's plagueis Darth Plagueis. Darth Plagueis. Darth Plagueis. It's like an analogy. <laughs> it's like an analogy. How an analogy is okay. like a, a parallel a... situation that has like a similarity. Um, but I don't know. Maybe that wasn't the right word. And it's well, I just uh, never addiction heard of it before. So I was like, mm-hmm. analogous, really? Yeah, mm-hmm. no, he made it up. I did not make it up. <laughs> <laughs> Fact so, check him. No, I'm just kidding. Um. So yeah, and addiction, like like uh, Luke is talking about, is a form of worship to something. It's a, it's a, it's, I, I think a lot of people that aren't Christian, they think that, uh, so if they're like an atheist or something like that, they, they think that they're not worshiping anything and in that way they're free because they look at religious people um, and they say, you are, you're, you're bound by, you know, your religious rules. You're bound by um, this document uh, with its, belief system and I'm free to be an open thinker or um, I'm free to do as I want with with my life right but without fail there's going to be something in that person's life that they worship and they are enslaved to it could be like anything that that Luke just mentioned Um, and so I think one of the messages of Christianity is that uh, the right thing the right person to be 
to be um, enslaved to, to surrender to, is God. It's the it's the only right person, and it's not even uh, it's not even a thing. It's not even a um, uh, a non personal thing, right? It's actually a person. It's and it's like there's like a parallel to your relationships in a marriage or uh, in a friendship where you have this two way um, communication between people. And so, um, yeah, so I, I think that's, I don't know, I, I might be going off a little, a little bit of a tangent here, but that's kind of how I would think about surrender in the Christian context. Sure. I do have a verse I want to, I want to throw in here too. Uh, it's going to be James four verse seven, chapter four, verse seven. So it says, submit yourselves then to God, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Come near to God and he will come near to you. And with this verse and what James is talking about is the devil is, he's solely trying to just drag us down. Like he wants, the world is his playground, right? And he wants to offer all those things that I mentioned earlier of just all these things the world has to offer. And for those of us who have experienced this or people listening, those things that you, you thirst for, and you get, and you get more of it, you continue to thirst for it. And whether that's something addictive, uh, money, work, relationships, whatever it is, you get a taste of it and you want more, but you're never satisfied. God offers satisfaction. And he's, he's a living water where we will thirst no more. And I don't mean physically thirst, but with our souls, where we're going to be thirsting no more because he offers true freedom. Be content. So. <clears throat> exactly. Yeah. yeah. yeah I, I, I think about this a lot. Um, I think about how in this world, there are so many things that we could, we could chase after and you can still find happiness in this world. I think without God, I think you can find maybe not joy, maybe not like true joy, but I think you can find like happiness. You can be a happy person. Um, but there there have been so many moments in my life that I have surrendered to God and it it's just like a different kind of joy mm -hmm. that you feel like inside because you just know that you have messed up so many times. You have sinned against God. You've lied to people around you. You've um, been jealous or prideful or whatever it is. And, and you just, you fall before God and you say, God, I am just so broken. I am, I'm just bad. Like I'm a sinful person and I am so sorry. And then just to have that image in your mind that God is there in front of you and he, he has his hand and he's like, get back up. Like you're good. Like I forgive you. It's just such a loving, warm feeling that no matter how much I was reaching my hand out like I was. Oh, oh, exactly. It's like this. It's like you know that you know that one painting. You know, or an ET. Oh, yeah. ET. <laughs> um, it's just such a different kind of love. Like you're not physically there with with someone. It's not a physical pleasure. You're you're not like gaining anything physically, but it's just this knowing that there is someone right there. You just can't see them, and they they are so happy that you just repented that you just admitted your mistake and hopefully we learn from those and, and we'll continue to fall down but at least we continue to ask for forgiveness like he's just so happy for that and so it's just it's just a very warming feeling to think about and and then to know that no matter how hard we fall in life and no matter how many times we mess up there's that promise of of everlasting freedom after death yeah buddy Yep. Um, Maybe that's what he says when we fall. He's like, ain't nothing but peanut. Ain't nothing but peanut. <laughs> he like helps you stand back Probably. Up. I think so. Yeah. I think too, you know, I think that, I think this is still on the same track. Uh, but when I think of someone who really surrendered their life to Christ and doing all good works for him and wanting to further his kingdom. I think of Paul and, you know, Paul, 
for most of his life. I mean, he 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 calls himself out in Romans like, you know, I was I was the top of the top of like religious leaders. I was there. Like everything that you could put to my name like to my name that shows status, that was me. And yet I still felt um, empty and I was still chasing after something and I w- am still just as bad as everyone else. And in fact, he was actually going out and persecuting God's people and God said, "I'm going to use him." And you can read about it in uh I believe it the book of Acts it talks about how um you have the Damascus encounter which is uh, God blinding Paul or at the time Saul and um he sends another disciple to go and like heal him and scales fall off his eyes and therefore he is now free and he carries out the work of Christ for the rest of his life and he talks about in many of his letters specifically in Romans you know how he's not perfect yet he talks about all the time how we are free because of grace and because God can give grace to anyone and because of that grace if we choose to accept it and follow after God we will then have a place in heaven and we'll be free from all of the pain and the the fleshly desires of this world he actually writes in Galatians chapter 5 uh, verse 13 it says you my brothers and sisters were called to be free but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh rather serve one another humbly in love for the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command love your neighbor as yourself and that's what uh, Jesus says in uh, Matthew and he goes on and says if you bite and devour each other watch out for you'll be destroyed by each other and he's talking about how you know if we keep trying to go after each other if we keep trying to gratify ourselves trying to trying to just get that one extra rung on the ladder you know he says it's just going to constantly be hurting you and coming after you and devouring you and he's saying you're free like go live and be free and serve me go like go serve god not serve paul don't serve paul <laughs> serve god and he's he's trying to say don't gratify the desires of the flesh because the flesh is what's going to tear you down it's going to keep you in chains and because of christ because of the grace and humbling ourselves to god and being like yes i'm a broken person but and i need you we are ultimately set free for all eternity and what a beautiful message that is like it's just, it's awesome. It's amazing. It's massive. It's, it's huge. Huge. <laughs> Grandissimo. Uh, does anyone have, uh, like, good advice for someone that's trying to surrender something in pray, their life? Pray, pray, pray. You literally just read my pray. mind. Really? You read yeah. my mind so well. That's, that's awesome. Cool. Could you repeat that question, please? I... Yes. Does anyone have any advice for someone that's trying to surrender something in their life? Could be anything. Um just like, and can I can I add to... the last little part to the question that I had yeah. also? I was thinking the exact same thing for okay. anyone, maybe just better though, right? Just a better, question. just a little bit, <laughs> just a little just bit, just a though, little yeah. bit. <laughs> <laughs> not a lot. Surrender your answers to me, and then or your questions to me, and I'll make yeah. them better. All right. right, right. Same same thing, maybe just for people who don't know Christ yet or are very new as Christians. Uh, just like maybe like an advice of something that we somehow we can uh, give an example of how to little baby steps of like surrendering, I guess. I'll start. I would say first identify what, what you feel is um, a little bit too consuming in your life, whether that be the things that you listed earlier Uh, in order to pinpoint what we need to surrender. First, we need to know what, what, what to surrender. And like I said, we should be surrendering everything in our life, 
but we're talking about maybe um, someone who's a little bit newer, maybe someone who uh, is just kind of curious right now. So I think it's it's definitely helpful to reflect and um, sorry, as soon as I see two people like smiling, like it's just like, <laughs> yeah, that's it's exactly literally just like an effect. Like I actually, I think I just can't control Step it. Step one, smile. There you go. A little bit. Yeah. Oh, there we go. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a little laugh. Shut up. I actually heard, <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, like, no, I'm kidding. I actually heard that if you, if you're going through like a tough time or something and you like fake a smile. Don't do that. No, it actually no, don't. like releases, no, it releases happy serotonin. Ab- yeah. Oh, I thought you were going to say like stare in the mirror. Because I tried that and well, that just freaked me out. <laughs> <laughs> that was like, weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> no, is, I mean, no, freaky. no. You don't have... I mean, you can look in the mirror, but you don't have to. It's, that, it's it optional. It gets weird. Like, after, like... Well, like, how minutes. long are you staring? I'm not talking about, like, stare for, like, yeah, 10 minutes. Like I'm saying, minutes. like, just, like, smile, like, quick for a couple seconds and then keep going. Um, but then next, I would say try to try to find some people that you can you can talk to about this and... We've talked about this in the past about picking the right people um, to be able to humble yourself before. And that may take some time. Um, maybe it's not at the church that you're at. Um, not every church is, not any church is perfect. And so if you feel that, you know, you can't find a grow group at your church, um, then maybe that's not the church for you and, and that's okay. Um, but yeah, I would say that those would be the first two big steps is because um, like with us, with us, we are, I would say that we're all pretty emotionally mature and we're very mature of like the issues that we have in our lives. And so once we've pinpointed those, we can come to each other and uh, ask even just for prayer. Um, and it's just kind of good to know, like, even though prayer may not like fix the problem and it doesn't, it, you know, you, you still have to take action. It's nice to know that you have support there and you have Somebody that <laughs> I can't. Wes, it's, Wes, it's good to have. <laughs> no, no. It's good to have Wes back here. Get a little, get a little more laughs going. Go. That is true. We've been getting way too serious. No, I'm kidding. And just to add on to that, I I've never experienced um, an overnight reduction or an overnight um, change in a sin that's going on in my life. Um. You know, I know that people have, like some people just like wake up and God tells them stop doing whatever it is they're doing and they just stop. Um, I've never experienced that, but I have experienced great changes in sins that, that were in my life. And I still have sins that, that God, I know God is, is working on. They're not gone yet though. So, I mean, either I'm not a Christian or God works in people's lives differently. And I believe that I'm a Christian. Just so. to bounce back on that, do you think you're not fully surrendering then? Yeah, of yeah. course. Yeah, no, I'm not. It's like, it's the tough question yeah, that I had to no. ask. Yeah. I have faith in Jesus, but no, I, I, I'm, I'm not, um, I don't, I haven't fully surrendered my, my, my every action to Jesus. And I so think, hard. I don't think there's any Christian so that, that yeah, does. I, I, I mean, was going to say, if they make us perfect. Yeah. If you, yeah. if you well, fully the, surrendered, yeah. I don't think you would sin. I'm just talking about like in the one aspect, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. No, I don't think I've fully surrendered mm-hmm. something that, that I, I'm continually working on and well trying and God is working on in me. But yeah, I would just say that, um, for anyone out there that has, a sin or a something that needs to be surrendered in, in their life. It might not happen overnight. Yeah. And I want to add to that. Christianity is, is in following Christ. It's not an easy task. It's not like you just pray enough times and it goes away. Poof. It's like, it's, it's a continuous battle because now you're on the other side where you see where your sin is at. It's, it's almost like your eyes are opened and now you're, you recognize that, Oh wow. Like I never knew that, just looking at a woman uh, in a lustful way is like sinning or, you know, getting drunk is a sin. Like I, I never really thought about these things, but it, it's, it's very, very difficult. And the world is going to persecute you because it's not what's attractive, you know, like withholding yourself from certain f- flesh desires. Like it's, it's not fun in the world's eyes. And sometimes when we pull back from those things, we come across as judgmental. 
Um, but yeah, what what were you saying? Though? I had a point that I was gonna make. Just that it takes time, and it's not always. <laughs> That's, what it, That's <laughs> what it was. I don't want to say. I also don't want to say that it's never overnight. I think that. Yeah. I just don't know that I've experienced that. Yeah. So I think with certain sins, like maybe you do get to a point where you kind of overcome a sin, and it's it's not something that you habitually fall again. But something like forgiveness, um, I've been having a lot of conversations with, I think with some of you guys and also with my fiance of just like what forgiveness means, like to forgive somebody. Because I would say that I've I've forgiven everyone in my past. I, I would say that. But then there are times when maybe a situation comes up and then it reminds me of something that that person said or did. And then I'm like, oh man, like that really sucks and that really hurt. So then what is it like, oh, I didn't actually forgive them? Like, it's just a journey. Whatever whatever the sin is, it's something that day in and day out you you have to do your best to give it over to God and um you may battle with that for the rest of your life, but you can I think you can still struggle with sin in your life and still be surrendering to God. And quick little sorry, a quick little side note talking about forgiveness. If you want to listen to an episode, go back to a previous episode, episode 11. Oh where we go through Genesis, talk about the story of Joseph. It's a great episode we had just talking about forgiveness uh, as in more depth on that episode too as well. Um, something too for maybe someone who's curious about Christ or just beginning like the number one step and like the most important thing you can do is first, you don't have to come to Christ all cleaned up. That's never, first, that's never going to happen. None of us here have our lives completely in order. Like Mila was saying, we haven't surrendered everything completely to God. I think you'd have to be squeaky clean, perfect to do that. And we're human, we sin, but come before God and give your life to him. I know it's a scary, uneasy thing that, you know, you might be iffy about, but give it a shot and go for it. And for those of you who have already, and you just don't really know where to start, pray about it. Yeah. Ask God to play something in your heart that maybe he wants you to work on and learn how to, to pray about it and to sit in silence and listen. And God will place on your heart for something. Like for me in the past, I've talked about it, horror movies. I don't know before, that's something I gave up to God, just him placing my heart that that's something I could watch before and never affected me. And now it does. And that's something that God was just saying, hey, you don't need to watch it anymore. It's not good for you. Uh, there's plenty of other things you can watch. And I gave it up to him. That's something I felt placed in my heart. But ask him. Go into prayer yeah. and just ask Christ to play something in your heart that he wants you to work on that can give you another step towards him. I, this is not a perfect analogy with that, but when you're saying you don't have to get yourself all cleaned up to come to God, I heard this from a, from a pastor. Do you clean yourself up before you get into the shower? Yes. <laughs> I knew you were gonna say Always. that. <laughs> I knew you were gonna say yes. No, you don't. Like no. that's silly. You don't get yourself clean before you hop in the shower to clean yourself again. Like you're going in the shower because you are dirty, and you are going to clean yourself up. And that is what it means to be a Christ follower daily. And for when you first come to know Christ, you know you're you're taking that step and being like, hey, like I surrender my life to you. I don't want to be this this person anymore that's full of lawless lawlessness. I want to choose to follow you now. But it is still a continual, you know, walk with Christ on going to Christ and receiving that grace that then cleanses you of your sin. And Jesus talks about this in, in Luke chapter 9. This is right after... Um, they feed the 5,000, uh, and right before his transfiguration, it says in Luke 9, uh, verse 23, Then he said to them all, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will save it. And that's what it means. It's a continual every day you know, practice of submitting to God and being like, all right, I'm taking up my cross and I realize I'm a broken person and I need God and I need your strength 
to carry me through the day. And I know I'm not perfect. I know I'm going to make mistakes along the way. But I have you and I have your strength. And you're going to help help me to be more in line with your commands and what you're calling me into as your follower. And so like with that, when it comes to sin and, and different sin issues, you know, I feel like God definitely has the power and the authority to, you know, cleanse sin in a blink of an eye and, you know, get rid of that from your life. But I also, for many people, it's, the continual everyday cycle of I'm not going to do that and I'm going to choose to follow God and I'm going to be indwelled with the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit's going to help me to have that self-control and not dive into those fleshly desires. And, you know, there's certain aspects of my life where that's a continual thing. And there may be months where I find um, certain freedom from that thing. And, uh, there'll be, you know, days and it's, it's a give and take. And some days it's really easy and some days it is really freaking hard, you know? Um, but that's just it. Like over time you can come to that place where that sin, that temptation isn't a big thing anymore for you. Like it's not that, that prevalent in your life. You know, if you're if you're an alcoholic, and I'm not an alcoholic, so I can't really speak into that as much. But I know people who have been alcoholics and who are sober now, and they've been sober for years. It's still that continual, hey, I'm taking up my cross and I'm going to choose not to do that. But it's gotten easier. It's gotten easier to not fall into that temptation of I'm going to reach for this bottle. And that, that all takes time. Exactly. And that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like it takes time. Like like you were saying, Mule, so it's not it's not gonna just happen overnight. It could in certain situations in some cases, but a lot of time it's gonna take more more time of just learning how to surrender each and every day, picking up your cross every single day, learning how to surrender to him and give that up to him. Speaking of time, um I guess another question I have is like surrendering our time right like dedicating days or dedicating time to god like what does that look like in your guys's lives like is it just every sunday that you're doing it or like what does it kind of look like for where do you feel like you feel the closest with god is it is it those sundays where you have that time or is it in your bible reading or i know for me um Oh, sorry, were you going to say something? I was just going to say, we have a Thursday night uh, group. That's fire. No, we don't. (laughs) Oh, okay. (laughs) Yeah, we do. do. Um, That's awesome because this is kind of like a a, uh, testosterone. Yeah, men, you know, it's kind of sick. But that's what this is. is. It's actually (laughs) just a bunch of guys just (laughs) hanging around. Um, But with with those nights, like, you really get to... um, like one person will pick a topic or something and then they'll have a ton of like prompts or whatever to ask people. And it's really cool to hear different um, stories and different things that are going on in people's lives and to hear um, what struggles maybe. Um, But yeah, dude, my mind tonight. (laughs) Dude, it's good. Also, I keep hearing somebody's stomach grumble. That's my throat. That's my throat. Yeah. Okay. It's fishbone's throat over there. Yeah, it is. Um, Oh, go ahead. I, I'm giving you the floor. I was gonna say, uh, no, no, I lost my train of thought. Dang go it. for okay, it. No, I it's got all it. you. It's all you. <laughs> um, well, I was just gonna say, I feel like there's more avenues of my life that I still need to surrender time to God. I've been in a very, very busy season lately, and you know, I've I've read the book Ruthless Elimination of Hurry great book it fantastic book john mark comer um you know i've read it i feel like i should reread it again and really take that time to dive into that i'm trying to reread a book right now called desiring god by john piper uh another great book uh john piper he's been a pastor for 
uh, decades, and he's just a very smart man. Um, but that's one thing that I've been really struggling with lately is finding that time, finding that rest. And so that is something for me that I know I need to work on. And so I can't say, you know, 100% with certainty, like there's specific aspects that I do fin- fantastic with surrendering to God because I, for a lot of times, I can just see where I can improve and where I can get better. And one of those aspects now is giving more of my time up and being intentional with, hey, I've got a free, you know, 20 minutes where I, I'm not doing anything. Am I going to, you know, and I, and I don't always beat myself up about this, but am I going to scroll through YouTube shorts and watch funny videos? Or, or Star Wars. Or Star Wars, yep. Nope. Or can I take that 20 minutes, pray pray during it, or, um, you know, read one of those books and learn a little bit more about how I can just be a better servant for Christ. I knew I recognized the name. John John Piper is a pacifist. He doesn't believe in uh like self-defense or violence or something like that. Yeah, he's a he's a big what they call Christian hedonist and that's all about delighting in God because God delights in himself. And that's a whole oh. that's part of the book that I'm okay. reading Desiring God. It's Does he very, talk about pacifism in the book? Uh, not a ton. Okay. I, he mentions it once. Cause I he's think, like but... opposed to people owning guns and stuff. Oh, Hall. it's an interesting view. <laughs> there it is. It's Thank you. Interesting. <laughs> interesting view. For sure. yeah. I remember what I was going to say. It came back to me. There you go. Yeah, it See, it just Shadrach. takes some time. So I would <laughs> back to your question, Joey, is about giving up time and surrender to Christ. I think for me personally in my life, it's like church on a Sunday morning, this podcast we have, Bible study on Thursdays. For me, it's it's a lot easier to to show up to these things and try to find the time to uh, dive into a topic more, do more reading, because I know there's other people, my friends, fellow brothers and sisters, sisters in Christ that are going to be there and hopefully keep me accountable. It's when I'm on my own outside of church, outside of being here with you guys, when I'm at home, like, am I going to take that time to read to be in the word or to spend time in prayer or am I going to go on social media? Am I going to watch TV? Am I going to go to the gym? Something like that. So I think it's, it's very hard because for me, I see it as I gave that time. Like I went to church on Sunday. I went to Bible study on Thursday, which are all good things. I'm not saying that they're bad, but I think the mindset of that isn't always the best because it's not, it's not very difficult to find a little bit of time throughout your day, you know, outside of going to church on a Sunday or going to Bible study once a week where you can use your commute to work, to pray. You can use, you know, maybe that 20 minutes before you go to bed to read. Uh, So that for me personally, that's something I struggle with right now is just, I do a lot better in community. It's sometimes on my own is when I can, I can struggle with a little bit more. So do you have one that stands out to you? (laughs) Paul? <laughs> Paul. I was trying Paul. to think about what you were That is my favorite meme. That is like <laughs> the <laughs> best meme. There's so many scenarios you can use that in. I think I send it to Paul. my buddy Jordan Paul. literally Paul. every day. Dude, it's so <laughs> funny. <laughs> but uh, what was the original question that you're, ta- uh, that you're talking where about? Where was Gondor? When- no, okay. <laughs> 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 the question was, you asked, that you said, um, like, uh, you know. <laughs> oh, my no, God. I think it was. Yeah, no, I'm what- what are certain areas of your life that you find that you've been, I think, doing well with surrendering mm-hmm. to God? Or, like, specific aspects that you've... Is like, time or something? Surrendered to God. You know. The pressure's on. We're not actually moving forward with this podcast until you say quick, something. Quick right? side note <laughs> while you think about it. Does anyone feel like it would be so amazing to have a dog up on these couches? <laughs> Dude, it's so awesome. That'd be sick. So if anyone wants a to doge? fund these, we could Noah get has like a, dog. a podcast. I've got I do it. I Noah, could bring, bring Dude, I could bring my dog. She would hate it, but Actually, we'll make her. My cat would start screaming. <laughs> Whenever he's like trapped in her room, he makes like <laughs> this. Yeah, it's like this death scream. I'm like, ooh, that's nasty. Well, we can get a, a podcast <laughs> cat and dog. That'd be perfect. A podcast. No, no, we got to get something like podcast. unique. Like, uh, 
Like a behemoth. I don't know, like a, what are those weasel? Like a Leviathan. weasel. A chinchilla. Yeah, or like a chinchilla. <laughs> a chinchilla would be fire, bro. Have you ever chinchilla. felt? Those things are soft. Dude, yeah. so, are soft. so soft. So soft. I'm well, going to stick with behemoth. They make coats yeah. out of them. Oh, you said a behemoth? Dude, yeah. uh, a I don't Leviathan. know if it fit. I think a fit. Leviathan fit. will fit. Yeah. We should do a podcast about the weird creatures of Dude, the Bible. Dude, that would be so that. much fun. There's like a fire-breathing thing. Well, is that the Leviathan? or That's uh, wild. That's, yes. Yeah. That's wild. But we'll save that. Dragons. Dragons, dragons, episode. dragons, dragons. Comment. Dragons. Comment down below if... if y- for um when you if you want us to do that <laughs> dragons i thought you were doing that well, do you when you when you have a dream when, yeah, when, when, when. Dude, that's, that's literally my brain anytime i'm like doing the podcast it's like, <laughs> my problem dude my problem is i'll like start saying something i make a joke and then i lose my train of thought i'm like oh snap buddy you're just like lost yeah i'm like oh huh? where, huh? where am i huh? and for those of you who watch Thank you so much. We True. for bearing with us. Oh yeah. We will uh we will do our best to continue to to be better. <laughs> <laughs> Are maybe, we keeping maybe all once, this in? Oh, maybe absolutely. Once we get, maybe once we get to a certain point, you know, spread the word and then we can start giving back. You know what I'm saying? You know I'm sane? What are you but saying? You, do you know what I'm super saying? I actually don't. No. We can we can do like fun little like, oh, comment your favorite whatever and then I don't know, we can See, you we're know? at the point right now where we have too many comments. It's too hard to go back. Oh, uh, that's true. All no, the way down yeah. to read our comment section goes and crazy. figure out what we want to get. <laughs> so absolutely crazy, dude. It's wild. Yeah, stop commenting. Yeah, Jesus. Yeah, please. <laughs> I don't have the time to go through all these comments. Getting blown up. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> and more hate. Yeah, we more need more hate. hate more comments. hate mail. It fuels please. us. Who was that Please. person that said the Dumpster Fire Console podcast? Yeah. That was oh, called that was Charles. Charles. Charles Snyder. That was funny. Shout out Charles. Shout out Shout Charles. Charles. Love Charles. Also, go. Uh, he's a very talented musician. Yes, he is. Very. We should, very we should drop the link. Shout out. You know what's Shout funny out. is we were talking the other day and he was saying he he made like this meme cooking thing of like him making burritos. And that like got more viral than any of his music. So he's like, he's like, is this my life now? <laughs> burrito boy. Just burritos. Yeah. So I'm like, you should just have like a, a small section of like cooking with Chaz. Cause like this is his nickname cooking with Chaz. And then like, he can yeah. just do that like once a month of like, dude, burritos just... are fire. I could go oh, for a burrito true. after this. True. Dude. Huh. Well, on that note. Gonk. Yeah. Yeah. But, one. uh, do you have any like other questions and stuff we can, we can get into for, for the topic of surrender or any more tips and advice for people that might be curious about it. What areas of your life do you find it hard to surrender? Hard. 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 Well, my heart posture. Your heart posture. Noah's accent is like very, very subtle, but I just absolutely blow it like way out of proportion. I'm sorry. I act like, yeah, act like you're like, I don't know, not from around here or something. Uh, now I, my accent is the only one that's correct. All of yeah. you speak weird. There mm-hmm. you go. I would say uh, being content with my current um, like point in life, like who isn't, but there's just so many things that are coming up this year that I just want to happen now. And um, a big one for sure is just graduating and getting a job. I feel like that'd be, that'd be awesome if I could start working and like... <sighs> Can you imagine the days when we don't have to like when we can just like go to work, and then it stays at work? You oh, know, yeah, it's you awesome. Don't have to yeah. Study. Yeah. It's oh. Oh. Yeah. Ever. Is it? Oh, well, I, I bet. Tell him it sucks. I bet. Well, <laughs> stay in school. <laughs> Wes is like. <laughs> <laughs> He's tweaking over there. So I think I think just being content. Like there, are, there are just so many things that I want, and it's all very um, like finite, very physical like things like i've said in the past like i want to collect like nintendo stuff and like i don't know i want to make a home gym and then sell them all on ebay no dude yeah. i'm not even doing that anymore <laughs> although al- although and this is gonna piss you off i did just oh, trade a few um oh games. My i told you this you didn't tell me what games though what games my you got games Dude, I got games, bro. You got games on your phone? I traded my 3DS and my in a couple of games for uh, no. a, a Nintendo Switch. Okay. Milo, let's dive into how that makes you feel. If you buy a couple it contr- dude, it's your it's all your decisions, you know. I just I um I just 
don't want you to like want those things in the future and then they're like twice as expensive. I'm just glad he finally surrendered them. Mm. Ooh. That's huge. Wow, that's yeah. massive. Didn't and on that, that point, thank you I, all for watching. No, I'm just joking. We don't have to sign out yet. I would say for me to get to it, uh, you were saying like some of the hardest surrenders, just as a young single man, just lust in general. Yeah. Like lust mm-hmm. is very... Second that. It, yep. mm-hmm. It's something as we all know, people listening and watching like, Male or female, it's just something that's around all the time. You know, uh, maybe it's for you, it's at work, it could be at the gym, it could be out in public, uh, obviously like online, whatever it is, social media. It's just something that seems to be around every single corner. And back to like what you're saying, Brandon, of even just uh, lustful thoughts about someone is is a sinful thing. So that's something that God's working on in my life is just, it's very difficult to to give that a hundred percent over to him and I'm working at it. And I know these guys do a great job of holding me accountable and hopefully I do a good job holding you guys accountable for that too. But like I said, something that I'm, I'm definitely working on for myself. So for me, it's just like more time. I know we have this and we have our Thursday nights, but I always have this like voice in the back of my head of like, Oh, you, you definitely have more time. And it's just like that, that's something I know I can surrender more and I can give that, that time to get. So that's definitely something I want to continue to work on. So like you said, you know, we have each other just to like, if you just send a text out in the chat or something, you know, like, Hey, give that, give that five minutes, give that 10 minutes, you know? So that's something okay. I want to work on. I think just for me and just in general, like pretty much every area of my life, I can think of something where I could be surrendering more. So I don't know. It's hard to like pin down a specific one. That's kind of why I said time, right? Yeah. Because it's that same boat of like, yeah. there's so many different avenues that we could mm-hmm. go down. And like, I think it just comes down to that yeah. time and effort. Yeah. Goals too. Like, you know, just some, I, I, I sometimes struggle with whether or not my goals are really in line with what, God wants me to do with my life versus like what my desires are for my life. So I guess that's one. Um, but yeah, just like just in, in, in general, I think I could do more surrendering. And then it all comes back to spiritual disciplines as well. One of the first couple or was it the first yeah. episode? I think one first of the first episode. episode, go back and watch that one. Uh, maybe in the future we'll do another one, but it, it does come down to spiritual discipline again, discipline of time, Discipline of, you know, lustful thoughts with your heart of, uh, what'd you say again for yours? Uh, like being content in the moment. Being content, like <clears throat> learning how to discipline yourself of being thankful and grateful for things that you have. And that's a whole nother, it's a whole nother conversation. That's like I said, we have a different episode than that, but it kind of ties in nicely to that as well. Yeah. A big one for me that... You know, praise God, he's really worked on in me. Oh, thank you. Hello. Um, you guys are weird. Uh, we are. <laughs> very. Nope. <laughs> Dude, it's hard. Like, Should we tell him now? Yeah, Joey's things. not weird at all. Do we, no. wait, guys. Dude, I'm like so he's normal. the most normal guy. Uh, guys, in the, do, we, do we tell him now? Yeah, we tell him. Do we, do we tell him? Yeah, tell yeah. Him. I think it's time. You guys didn't make the cut. I'm sorry. Dang. Yeah, sorry. Uh, take your. We'll we're start kind of doing like podcast. a survivor thing. And surrender, surrender. Another, your, another announcement: We just got a sponsorship from Rain. Woo! They will be supplying, Whoa. but you guys won't be a part of endless it. Oh. rain. <laughs> That's all right. We got our own. And we're sponsor. not actually yeah, we're not turning, actually, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lie. <laughs> turn in your microphones and your cords. Yeah. Um, hitting. <laughs> it's like uh, <laughs> hit the streets. Yeah, you guys didn't watch that, but like Bachelor, this dude, he like comes out like when they have the last rose. It's the things. most obvious thing oh, in the Jesse. world. Yes, I'm yeah. like I could do this job and be paid that much. He he, there's one rose left. He walks out, ladies. There's one rose left. They're like, no kidding, it's right there. Oh, it makes me so right upset. There. We right, know there. Jesse. right there, he moves. <laughs> yeah, it makes me upset because I'm like, man, the m- amount of money that he gets paid to do this. He just kind of stands there and asks him like, hey, so how, how is it going? What are you What are you thinking? Anyway, I'm I'm way off topic here on <laughs> yeah. the Bachelorette. I'm just I have I have <laughs> hands to throw with Jesse. Dang, okay. beef. But well, I'm trying to surrender it. So yeah, there you, there go. you go. It all comes full circle. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was gonna say something. You know, 
praise God. Like, he's really worked on in me. So this kind of sucks because I indirectly answered your question before. And now I'm indirectly answering it again. Just That's okay. Full circle. Yep. Uh, I literally just answered them flip-flop. So, I mean, yeah, whatever. Anyways, um, but, like, something, praise God, like, he's been working on in me is surrendering money to him not being tied down to feeling like i need to hit a certain amount um and that's been that's been that's been fantastic and i feel so freed in that way because for a long time i was really struggling with that and there there still is that every you know once in a while like struggle or a feeling like envious or whatever or greedy um but for the most part he's really worked on in me just being generous and that like i couldn't be more thankful about that and he's still working in me on that but that's one of the things that i don't struggle with as much anymore in like in like surrendering and that truly has like helped me in that contentment. Do I always feel content? Heck no. School um grinds my gears a lot. I feel that. It's yeah. I feel I'll, that. Also money would be a, a great topic I think to talk about sometime. Mm-hmm. Maybe yep. somewhere in the future, but yeah. difficult thing to I know for a lot of people it's also, isn't that the most mentioned thing in the Bible is money? Yep. Finances? I, I believe. Think, I think it's love. Are you just talking about like a specific issue? It might be an I think love issue. and forgiveness. Oh, okay. I think like, uh, like those are broad, teachings I on, I think, Really? Money, okay. I, I did believe. not know that. Don't quote me. I think it's something. Oh, I'm like quoting that. you. <laughs> Quoted. <laughs> no, we'll, we'll, we'll fact check him. Don't worry. Yeah. Pull up the stats, Milo. Awesome. Nah. Does anyone have any any more <laughs> questions or? Well, I think we can we can land it land it off that. But to wrap her up, Joyce, thank you for coming up with the talk of, of surrender. Yes, I sir. think, like always, I think things that we talk about super important. Uh, I had things that I want to try to apply to my life, and hopefully, for those of you who are listening or watching, you guys can take something away from this. But just remember, when it comes to surrendering, it doesn't have to be everything all at once. Like Noah mentioned before, like we don't get into the shower clean already. We're going to go into the shower to clean ourselves up. Like We bring ourselves before Christ. We surrender to him, and he's going to work in our lives. So whether that's through prayer or slowly giving up those things to Christ, allow him to work in your life. And whatever that you're struggling with, the sin, the addiction the desire is give those things up to Christ and you're going to experience true freedom. Like Christ will unchain you from the enslavement of this world and sin. And it may seem like now with what the world has to offer as freedom, but we can, we can promise you. And for those of you who experience it, it's not true freedom. You're going to continue to thirst for those things. As you experience it, you're going to want more and more, but it's only through Christ the one true God that offers the living water where we're never going to thirst again. But off of that, remember to like comment and subscribe. This is the campfire council podcast. Thirst. Hard, 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 hard.